Alright, now let's get to talking about the Batman. Ever since I started doing character analysis videos, many friends and subscribers have been asking me to do a Batman video, and I've been putting it off for a long time, but I can totally understand why. He's one of the most loved characters in the DC Universe, if not one of the most loved characters in all of fiction. But why is that? Why do people love Batman so much? Well, obviously, a character like Batman may have his haters, and perhaps he's just a character that many brooding wannabe edgy kids feel they can relate to just because of how dark and brooding he is. However, I personally completely love Batman's complexity and his overall outlook on the world around him, which is one part of him that I find totally relatable. But before we get started though, I have to put the title as Bruce Wayne only because there are many versions of the Batman character, some of which wasn't even Bruce Wayne himself. There's a time where Superman was Batman and Dick Grayson was Batman. For those who don't know, Dick Grayson is the original Robin, the one who ended up becoming Nightwing. Yes, Nightwing was Batman at one point or another. Then we have Terry McGinnis, who you may know better as Batman Beyond. And finally, in the Flashpoint comic storyline, we see an alternate version of Batman where Bruce Wayne is killed by a killer as a child, causing his father Thomas Wayne to become Batman while Martha Wayne became so insane that she became the Joker. So yeah, I think you understand now why I have to dedicate this analysis video to Bruce Wayne specifically and not just Batman under that name by itself. And I have to say, Batman is quite an overrated character. Look, I'm sorry to say that, but not really. I love Batman just as much as everyone else, but people love to dick ride this character by giving him feats he never did and always like to give him the benefit of the doubt in every situation. But enough of all that, let's explain what makes Bruce Wayne's Batman such a compelling and interesting character. Keep in mind that since there's also many versions of Bruce Wayne's Batman to go over, I'm going to be using evidence from movies as well, especially from modern Batman movies. So yeah, let's go ahead and get right on into it. I think the best place to start would be in his origin story, the death of his parents at the hands of a gunman. Now, the death of his parents hit him pretty hard, as it would with any other kid, but I think that's used as his motivation for more than what we already know. We know Batman has a strict no-kill policy when it comes to taking down criminals and fighting crime, and it was even explained many times exactly why he's not comfortable with the idea of killing. To put it short, he believes that if you were to kill someone intentionally, then there would be no going back. He feels that this would stain his name in blood and would never be able to wash it off. And I can definitely understand why he would think this way, especially considering Batman is always known for his brutal and harsh methods of interrogation and his other work, which always has him approach the gray line of being a vigilante as to what's morally good or not. Since he approaches that gray line quite often, it makes perfect sense why he doesn't personally want to cross it, as he basically thinks that as soon as he does, then he becomes just like them. However, I think there's a little bit more to it than just that. Now, I'm not sure if it's exactly been mentioned very much, but it clearly seems that he has a genuine hatred for criminals. And he knows criminals are more likely to do the killing than he would. I personally believe he refuses to kill because if he does, he would be comparable to the assassin that murdered his parents. And I also believe that's when his hatred for criminals began. And I also believe that's where his belief of striking them with fear also began. And the Bat costume, in my opinion, is meant to look intimidating enough to do that by appearance. Since Batman motivated his suit by his fear of bats, you can tell he uses the Batman persona as a means of his enemies to share his fear of bats. So with all of that being said, we know that Batman has established his own code of morals and follows them thoroughly with each syllable. I think a good example of his no-kill rule is in Batman vs Superman, where he's battling Superman and he was prepared to kill him with a kryptonite spear. Most people gave this scene a lot of backlash because all it took was Superman to say Martha for Batman to stop, but let me tell you why this was a good idea. Remember, Batman was only a kid when his parents died, so Superman saying Martha made Batman remember that night, but that's not all. Batman may have also thought to himself that while he lost his Martha, his mother, he can help in saving another Martha, Superman's mother. And I think the proof of this is literally in that same exact scene. Remember, Batman was holding a kryptonite spear to Superman's chest, so he probably also instinctively compared himself to the assassin who killed his parents in cold blood. Exactly like how he would have killed Superman if he went through with killing him with the spear. I know he also killed many other criminals in the movie, but let's just ignore that, alright? Let's use an example of the interactions with his arch nemesis, the Joker. If you watch my Joker character analysis video, you would know that the Joker is a very nihilistic, sociopathic character who's honestly just waiting for death at this point as he's lost all faith in humanity and justifies the crimes he commits based off of that idea. And if you watch the Batman Under the Red Hood movie, he once again states he doesn't kill the Joker because he doesn't want to cross the line between good and bad. But I feel there's another reason for that in this specific case. Joker does all the things he does to also manipulate Batman into killing him, and Batman knows this. 
Joker often states that all it takes is one bad day for your life to turn upside down and wants to prove to Batman that everyone has a breaking point and tempts Batman to get to that breaking point until Batman finally decides to kill him. This is to show Joker's point of everyone having the tendency to go insane at some point. Now, my buddy Toby basically put it best this way, but to Batman, if he kills the Joker, then in his mind, the Joker wins at the very end of it. Batman wins the battle, but Joker ends up winning the war and ends up getting the last laugh. Batman is also a character with his faults, none of which he seems to try to deny. Now, he's also gotten backlash from both Nightwing and Red Hood about this, but enlisting a child to fight crime with him is definitely not something a responsible Guardian figure should do. I mean, hell, doing it pretty much got Red Hood killed when he was still Batman's second Robin. And Batman has expressed grief about this, but clearly wasn't enough for Red Hood. Red Hood is also a character I'd like to do an analysis on, so if you want to see that, just leave a comment below and subscribe to the channel and that'll convince me enough to do the video sooner rather than later. I think another cool thing about Batman, despite me saying earlier in this video how overrated he is, is that he always thinks logically rather than impulsively thinking on his emotions. This is one of the things that makes some people argue whether or not he's a psychopath, but even if he is, that's one of the good things about him. He always takes a step back to analyze the situation at hand and also makes plans for literally any scenario that can happen. Like in the case of an apocalypse, for example. All of this stuff about Batman that makes him so complex honestly sometimes makes people forget that he's still just a human being with no superpowers or any of that. However, I think this is where we'll get a little controversial. It's because Batman is only a human being that he can only do so much in battle. It's not much of an issue if he has to take on Joker, Scarecrow, Bane, and so forth, but if he had to take on Superman, Doomsday, Wonder Woman, even Darkseid, he would get massacred. Now, people often defend Batman because he's a super genius who knows everything that he does, but in the face of overwhelming power, of those who can destroy a planet simply by stepping on the crust, like Superman for example, intelligence can only really get you so far. I plan on doing a Batman vs Superman video talking about exactly what would happen if they fought, since people still debate Batman can take on God himself, so if you want to see that, just leave a comment below and subscribe to the channel. Batman really is an interesting character, even though I've kinda clowned on him a few times in this video, he's still one of my favorite DC characters ever and deserves all the love that he gets, but anyway, I think that's just about where I'll stop the video. I think I've gone on too long about Batman, so hopefully you guys enjoyed this video, and if you did, please be sure to leave a like on this channel, subscribe to the channel, and leave a comment down below as to what you think, and give me a comment also on what kind of videos you want me to do next. That's pretty much it for today, guys. Matrox Gaming out. Peace.